Hey, Steve with RV Recycle coming to you today with another episode of Travado Tips. Even if you don't have a Travado, but you have an RV, you might find this of interest, so stay tuned. For those of you who are regular viewers of RV Recycle, you know that we have been absent from our regular routine due primarily to my retirement, a decision to sell our house, and now we're moving. So I went ahead and took a little bit of time away from the busy moving schedule to see if I could put something together to get posted on the channel. If containers is part of your organization scheme, one thing you can do to help improve that is make sure that you keep a list. Now I keep the list on the inside of the container so that I can put stuff on top without fear of making the list illegible. I also have hung here a copy of the list. It's in a little Ziploc bag. I'll put a link in the description area below of this particular size of Ziploc. Works really well and I just cut a hole using a pair of scissors and, and hanging on a command hook just above the area where the container is located. Our next tip is to convert as many of your AC powered devices to DC as possible. Why is that? RV house batteries have their DC power converted by an inverter into 120 volt AC power in order to use your 120 volt AC devices in the RV, like the air conditioner you heard just kick on. When the inverter is on and even idle, it consumes power from the RV batteries. And when the inverter is on and actually converting battery power into AC, the draw from the batteries is even greater. So we save more power by changing as many of our AC devices to DC as possible. That act in itself means a lesser need to use the power hungry inverter. Now there's going to be some things that you can't convert. For example, the AC. It's not so easy to convert a cooktop from AC to DC, nor a microwave. Now here in front of the microwave is something that most any of us can do, and that is to have a vacuum that is DC powered. It is charged via AC, but we do the charging while we're rolling down the highway or while we're stopped and plugged in. Another conversion you can do is your TV. If you still have a TV, we don't, we took ours out, if you do, you can convert it from AC to DC. How do you do that? Well, you have to buy a full TV unit. They do make TVs that are DC powered. This next tip is not for everyone. I realize that. And it has to do with taking care of business when you're on the road, when you're literally in the vehicle and it is moving. Now, if you are the driver of your RV and you have a need to go to the facilities, do us all a big favor, pull over and stop first. Don't think that because it's on cruise control that you can just hop up and run to the back and then, you know, take care of business and zoom back up. It does not work. Contrary to what someone may have told you or what you may have read somewhere on the internet. You know, they say, if it's on the internet, it must be true. Well, guess what? That's not always the case. This one is true, though, let me tell you. If you try to run from the steering wheel all the way back here to the facility, you are going to have an accident. Maybe two. One in your pants and the other one with your vehicle. Passengers, if you have to make your way to the facility while you're going down the road, first take a look down the road and make sure you have a straight stretch of road before you come down the hallway. If the driver has to go around a corner, you'll be slung from one side of the RV to the other. It happens every time. And you want to make sure that the driver knows to keep an open line of communication. If the driver has to pass someone, you're going to want to know that as well. Even if you're back there on the throne, you're going to want to know that the vehicle is about to move to the left or the right. Because even seated, without a seat belt, you could come off your throne. And guys, let me tell you, experience talking here, just go ahead and sit down. Don't try and do the manly thing. 
because you will have urine everywhere in that bathroom. I guarantee it. I don't care how straight is the road. That vehicle, unplanned, will find every pothole in the stretch of the road between the time you get up and the time you try to finish. Make sure when you're through that you use this pedal down here to flush. It might seem like you're saving some water, doing the environment some good, and all those types of things if you don't flush after you tinkle. But I'm going to tell you, again, experience talking. The more tinkle that goes in there and doesn't get flushed, the greater the likelihood is that you are going to have tinkle in the floor. And that is not fun to clean up. Hey, that's it for today. Hope you got something out of this video, even if it was only a little chuckle. Give us a thumbs up if you got anything at all. And if you haven't subscribed, I ask you please do so. Once you subscribe, you can click the little notification bell. And once you click that notification bell, you will be emailed automatically by YouTube informing you that I've posted a new video. So, subscribe. Hey, look forward to seeing you again soon.